just started, I've just come in on the short line, I'm fishing top two plus three sections. The waggler line started and quieting off now after, after that run of skimmers and the few carp I had on it early. And I've been feeding this line with meat since about an hour in. So all I'm doing now, I've got one of my, one of my large soft pots on the end of the pole and I'm just cupping in 15 or so cubes of meat and laying the rigging over the top. I'll show you the rig in a sec if I catch a fish. I've had a couple of bites on it already so things are looking promising. This particular line on the Specy Lake here is where you can do some real damage. You can get these big skimmers, you can get those to line up and then get some carpet to come in on it late. You can do a really frightening weight on it. Again, being in the middle of summer, I'm using, I'm using heavy lines. I'm using 017 Vertex hook lengths to 021 Vertex main lines and a size 2 Turbatini 175. So we're not using nonsense gear here, you know, it's, they're feeding fish, they're hungry fish, they're not, certainly not line shy. Plus, you know, the added security that if you do hook one of the gigantic things that live here, chances are you could you are going to get it in. So indication. There we are. There's another bream on. You can see the, the green elastic I've got in the pole. Although it's a strong elastic it's lovely and forgiving when you're when you're catching these these big commercial skimmers so i've got no fear of using it and pulling out a fish at all look at the quality of these fish now this, that's another two to three pound skimmer we've got or bream really and as we know don't they love meat that one certainly wanted it Look at that, a Larford belter. Let's pop him in the net and see if we can get another one. What I'm also doing, I thought I'd better, you know, just after I've hooked a fish, I'm feeding about 15 cubes by hand. This means there's a constant flow of, flow of bait entering the peg and should keep the fish where we want them. So right, very quickly I'll talk you through the rig. Turbatini 175 moving up, two droppers and then a small spread bulk. Moving up, we've probably got about seven foot I would imagine. I've got an FP 700 in a 0.8. This is an inline pattern, a very, very strong pattern um, designed by myself for these sort of venues where you're, you're putting your gear through, a, through, through its paces and they're built to take abuse. Right, let's see if we can get another one. There's another skimmer. As you can see, during a match, you can build up a just an awesome weight with fish this big. You can get them coming regularly. You know, there's another two pound fish there. And this lake is absolutely full of them. I mean, look, pristine fish. An absolute joy to catch. Right, with the swim fading slightly, it's time to re refeed it. Another beautiful roach. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna put my rig down. I'm going to pick up my cup. I'm going to half fill it with pellets and top the rest up with meat. And with time ticking on now, it's time to try 
and play our ace card. It's time to start feeding that edge line. I'm just going to pop that in there. And while that settles, we're going to start feeding the edge line. Now feeding down the edge is really, really important that you, you get your timings right. The method we're going to be doing, we're going to be feeding loose ground bait down the edge. It's vital you don't start feeding it hours and hours before you intend to fish it. Because very simply, the fish will come in, eat it all and be gone. Simple as that. All you've got to do is feed it 10 minutes before you want to go down there. And don't be afraid to put some in. I brought a few kilos with me today, so I'm going to start potting some in. I literally just scoop my top kit through my ground bait bowl. Right, that's six gone in. And what I'm also going to do now, if I can just... And this is the reason we bought these. A big bag of dead maggots. Carp absolutely love dead maggots. And it's just the perfect bait to accompany ground bait down the edge. Again, these are these are big fish we're targeting here, so don't be don't be shy of feeding them. Okay, so two potfuls of big maggots and a load of ground bait gone down in the edge. So what we'll do now, we'll go straight back on our short line that we've refed, and that should have the bait there should have settled now. Hopefully there'll be more fish waiting for us. So, a nice cube of meat. So it looks like they've come back over the feed. What I'm going to do now, after this skimmer, I'm going to have a quick drop in on the pace to see if there's any big boys about. And then, I just can't help myself, I've got to get down that edge to see if we can catch a few big ones. Another absolute glorious fish, pristine. Stunning. We're going to have a quick drop in on paste on the sh over the short line before we go down the edge. Um, very, very quickly talk you through my paste rig. It comprises of 021 Vertex from Dacron connected to hook, a size 6 uh, Turbotini 175, a bulker shot that cocks the float to about three quarters of the capacity because what I want is the float the weight of the paste to weigh it down so that when, when the paste comes off the float pops up, I know it's off. The float itself is another one that um, I've designed, this is the FP900, um, another inline pattern, it's super strong. This carbon stem here actually goes straight through the body of the float and is embedded in the actual bristle. So there's absolutely no way that this bristle is going to fold back on itself should you pull out of a fish. Sometimes happen because we like to use long bristles when pace fishing. If you foul look one and it comes off, the pressure of the water against it sometimes makes the tip fold. Never ever going to happen with these patterns. Again, same Frenzy Green Elastic and also the new Frenzy Pace Pot. Works in exactly the same way as the soft pots only it fits a little bit further back down your pole just to make shipping out paste a lot easier. They come, that'll fit right the way down there. There's actually a bigger one as well that'll fit down as far as your number two joint. Two in a pack, both sizes come, one of each, one of each size in a pack. So let's go and have a little look. 
pick off a fairly substantial piece of paste. As you can see, the, the paste pot means the rig is shipped out absolutely tangle free. Because it fits down that extra sort of foot and a half down your pole section, it makes fishing paste an absolute dream. No more, no more tangles, no more swinging leads around the, the, the top of the float. Very, very simple to do. And just ship out, line it up over your feed, turn the pot, pull the pole back, and there we are, we're fishing. Let's see what happens with this. Yeah, indication straight away there. Another quick tip for you when you're pace fishing is learn to read the bites. If you're not interested in any of these bites where it's going dink, dink, you want a real proper thump on the float. And that tells me that that fish has picked the bait up. And I think we've got ourselves a carp. Only a little one by the feel of it, but... See how the sort of me medium grade elastic just absorbs all the lunges of the fish. Don't rush it, never ever rush it. So it's only ever good to you when it's in the keep net. There we are. Oh, a little bit bigger than I thought that. An absolute wood carving this one. Look at that. What a, a Larford beauty that. Superb. And this is a baby compared to what's in here. Let's see if we can get a few more, shall we? Right, I think obviously there's plenty of skimmers still there. There's no more carp. I can't wait to get down that edge, see if there's a few big ones in. I can't wait any longer. Let's go and have a look. <laughs> 